Hey guys, did you hear that 3080 sold out? Wow, nobody has ever covered that topic before. And prices on eBay are unsurprisingly pretty high. That doesn't look like graphics cards. 1500 weird symbol prices. That's $2,000. Let's calculate how much more that is than the original price using mycalculator.com. So that's 1300 bucks more. Wow, math sure is difficult. So instead of buying one like people with brains, I'm going to 3D print one to look at it. I just need to find out how. Hmm, yes, of course. I understand everything. 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, is a manufacturing process where 3D print. So I started by using this model. Thank you, Decker one from Thingiverse. You saved me a lot of time in the end. To make it 3D printable, I had to tweak it a little bit in Fusion 360. There were a couple of voids in the model that I had to fill in, and I had to manually select the relevant bits of the mesh to separate it out into the components to make them printable. So instead of printing everything as a single object, which I couldn't do anyways on my Ender 3 because of the bed size, I split the entire model into parts like fans and the heat sinks and the shroud. This shroud ended up being the first model I printed. And as I already mentioned, this model is too big to print in one piece on my printer, so I had to plain cut this model in half. I used Mesh Mixer for this, but I also like Microsoft's uh, 3D Builder, or quick cuts like that. Pretty short printing time was then followed by a lot of sanding. I printed this model with 0.8mm nozzle at something like 0.4mm layer height. In hindsight, I should have probably printed at lower layer height, because there's a few areas that I'm not happy about the quality. I proceeded anyways and printed the fan followed by the heatsink around the fan. At the time, I was really struggling with first layers after the infill and the quality of them. Luckily, you won't see the sparks behind the shroud. One of the smaller heatsinks with a heat pipe inside printed rather nicely. So here's me test fitting the fan and the heatsink, and some of the extra heatsinks on the sides. Everything fits well, but all parts sit a little bit too low because I'm going to print the nicer quality base for them. Next I printed the other heatsink. You can see here I'm printing on the raft which turned out to be a good thing because you can see the raft warping itself but that didn't affect the part. I gave up on tie lapses at this point because they didn't work reliably. Then I cleaned up the heatsink that we just printed, took out the raft and some of the support structures for the heat pipes. Printer struggled a little bit on the sides, but the visible top and bottom printed beautifully. The only issue here being that it didn't quite connect some of the fins at the end. But that's largely a problem with the model uh, and not the print itself. When separating the model, I also somehow didn't realize that the heat pipes are supposed to go through the shroud, so the piece didn't fit. I'm going to fix that in a minute, but first I'm going to glue the end fins to the part itself. Heat sinks on the sides also had heat pipes that stick out and wouldn't actually fit inside the shroud, so I'm going to sand them down. It was honestly quite a difficult process because those heat sink fins are quite brittle, so it's quite difficult to reliably grab the part. It was always good to go at this point, but it just needed a tiny bit more persuading.
photo one now fits nicely. I just need to repeat it all again for the second part. I think we're done with this bit. We just need to sand the bigger heatsink that sits inside the shroud now. I hate sand. It's rough and coarse. So here are all the inner parts together. As I already mentioned, they look very ugly at the top. The one on the left was printed on a raft, so the first layer really didn't want to go nicely. This silk finish filament that I'm using generally seems not very good at printing good surfaces. I'm printed quite a few face plates uh, with the intention of painting them, so I can just glue them on top and we won't see those imperfections. Here I'm using an acrylic paint. I don't know why I thought that's going to work. You can't see layer lines anymore, but you can really tell apart the brush strokes. You can especially tell them apart on this larger faceplate that's an RTX 3080 on top of it. So I went ahead, I bought some primer and some spray paint. That of course meant more sanding to strip all this paint. I was already quite annoyed at this moment, so I didn't film any of the painting process. But you'll be able to see the final results in the final amazing montage of this not at all a useless print. So in the end it turned out to be a really fun project. Also by far the most time consuming 3D print that I've done. So it's now just sitting there on my wall, looking a little bit like the real thing. In darkness from far away. It's also an absolute chunker. Here it is sitting on top of my graphics card on my PC. My kitchen scales only go up to 500 grams, so they weren't enough to weigh this. I'd say it's closer to a kilogram. If I had to redo this project again, well, first of all, I definitely wouldn't, but I'd probably print everything at smaller layer height just to make everything look nicer. NVIDIA, please give us more stock.